Oh, it's good to be back. Back with the rats with the wings, that is. Now, our first guide on these guys is one of our oldest yet, which also means it's completely outdated and needs another flyby if you catch my drift. So, from brand new mechanics to four, count them, four additional birds to discuss, we best get our binoculars out as we've got some ornithology to do. Now, birds spawn all over the surface, however, turf is going to play a huge role in exactly what types we actually see. Red birds, or their wintry counterpart blue birds mind, love grasslands and savannas. However, they will still be making a cameo in our forest nonetheless. Crows, on the other hand, spawn pretty much anywhere but grasslands, so peruse your forests, deserts, and rocky lands if you're looking to murder a murder, if you know what I mean. Remember now, though, if there's a friendly scarecrow in any of these biomes, most of these crow spawns are going to become canary ones instead, so make notes. But what's this? A brand new bird on the water, you say? Well, yes, but actually no. For you see, while puffins will replace all bird spawns while we're on the high seas, they are only just crow reskins. Nothing more. But these next two, however, are well worth our time, if we can reach them, that is. Moon blind crows and misshapen birds are exclusive warblers who enjoy going to war with us during moonstorms. Now, typically, we just want them dead. Though, do note that we can capture them via traps for later. But the fourth and final foul of the day, you ask? Polly Roger. Introduced mere weeks ago, he kinda hardly matches the description of most birds in this game. However, I still felt that a honorable mention was in order here. I mean, he is a bird after all, and is a companion which is really cool, and if that's not enough, he's gonna be a companion now loose for us. So how could we not include him in this revisit? Get to pirate raid hunting if you want him now. And while all that covers the specifics of bird spawns, there are still a few things we should say about the general mechanics of it all, like how rain influences their timers. Birds usually fly down every 5 to 15 seconds, but rain will have them doing so 4 times as quickly, so use that to your advantage for sure. We have a lot of ways to make it rain nowadays. And heck, you can do it during most of the night too, as it's only complete darkness that truly ends bird spawns. To continue though, spawn birds occasionally leave behind seeds, and this can be highly abused and farmed by simply running them off over and over and over again. However, they will also drop other stuff nowadays too, just very rarely. Like, very, very rarely mind. Twigs, grass, and flint were added to their loot tables since last we spoke, and this is here to help new players get off to a better start. But I think you can agree with me that none of these odds are really going to be helping anyone. But hey, it's still pretty neat, and it's a unique talking point for the channel, which is what these updated videos are all about. Bird traps, on the other hand, are not new, and haven't gained anything fresh to talk about at all, so simply drop them in wait, or drop them in bait. Bait with seeds, that is. We trap birds with bird traps. Who could have guessed that one, am I right? But once we do have them, what can we do with them? Well, we can feed them seeds to keep them content, or we can twist their little necks to make ourselves a bit happier, I suppose. All birds, besides canaries, are going to drop their feathers 50% of the time, and while said feathers will be playing a huge role soon, I would like to suggest another option for our caught friends here. Bird cages. Arguably some of the best structures in this entire game that will keep any bird alive for 20 days with zero input from us. That said, if we know what to feed our caged birds, they can do oh so much more for us. Any meat, yes, even raw monster meat, will result in a pile of eggs if we do so please. Normal seeds have a 33% chance to be turned into guano, which is a mechanic I think people forget about quite often nowadays. Crops drop their crop seeds of course, however note that it is now a one to one exchange at the end of the day. Meat fed to moonstorm birds can net you tons and tons of rotten eggs for gunpowder or fertilizer. And lastly, any fruits or veggies given to these fledglings will be turned into rot as you can see. Make notes. But if all that wasn't enough, there's also the process of producing volatile canaries everyone. If toadstool is alive, all canaries kept in the caves will get sick in 6 to 12 minutes. And once that happens, we've got three choices. Immediately drop them to put on a show that will blow their minds for one to two feathers, bring them to the surface to do the exact same, only they'll fly off, leaving five to six saffron feathers instead, or we can spawn 
is Retold Stool. It's gonna be your decision, of course. However, this last one is very interesting, as not only does a Misery Told Stool kill lead to a craft that actually requires a Volatile Canary to create the entire process, also leads to a potential duplication farm. Learn more here. As we've got some final notes about bird killing to take before we truly end the day on some bird crafts. Whether you're using a boomerang, blow darts and slingshots, and or going hard with Wickerbottom's Birds of the World novel for a potential bird slash Krampus farm, we're all here for the same thing. The feathers. And if you don't care about naughtiness and Krampus, the only bird farms I would ever recommend are the ones featured in this video right here. Seriously, you want hundreds of feathers in seconds? You should go watch it. As we're wrapping up our fun today with stuff like the feather hat, clothing that will provide a bit of sanity regeneration effect, while also being a requirement for adopting Giblet at the Rock Den, but is really all about speeding up bird spawns. Feather hats will have birds spawning every 2 to 10 seconds, but will also increase the amount of birds that can spawn to 7 over the usual 4. Feather pencils are next though, if you've got the crow feathers and will allow for us to mark any mini signs we happen to have, go into making map scrolls for our own maps for new players to read potentially, all seven of Wickford's battle songs also require a pencil to be made nowadays, and lastly, two of Wickerbottom's newest novels can have the exact same thing said about them. To continue, all four blow dart types need a specific feather to create, however only two are worth your time, as they're the only two that actually deal any damage whatsoever. Floats weren't around back in the day, so they do get a mention here too, but do note that all four feather floats are exactly the same minus their colors, but they're still good though. On the contrary, Summer Fress were a thing when the first video were released and were just as ignorable then as they are now. And lastly, saddle horns do have a use, albeit a super specific one. Removing saddles from B-Flow without ruining the durability. Yup. That's all she wrote. And there you have it, everyone. Yet another revisited and updated guide for birds within Don't Starve Together. Even with four additional birds to discuss, we really didn't gain that many new crafts or mechanics for these rats with wings. Yeah, sure, the Moonstorm guys are pretty cool, and we definitely expanded on some forgotten or fresh knowledge, but birds are still just birds, and their feathers are shockingly dull beyond a very few recipes. But Oh well, they still deserved one last time to fly, I feel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Well wishes to all. Don't look up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.